All right, good evening. My name is Darren1831 Collins, and as an author, uh, everything that I do, I want it to promote a healthy esteem for foundational Black Americans. So today, uh, I'm going to read you guys the third installment of my No Mountain High Enough series. Um, and it is called Zola and Daddy Walk with God. So we have three books. All books can be purchased um, at my website, collinscubicle.com, and that's collinscubicle.com. So we have Dr. Zola and Daddy Walk with God. And we also have um, Zola's Daddy Daughter Dates and sorry, Dr. Zola and Daddy Explore Ear Infections. So I'm gonna read you guys the third installment and that is Zola and Daddy Walk with God today. So let me see if I can pull this down a little bit. All right. Hello, my name is Zola Shakur Collins. Daddy loves hip hop. He got my name from the greatest rapper of all time, Tupac Shakur. I love going on daddy daughter days. It is my favorite thing to do. We go everywhere, zoo, circus, apple picking, rock climbing, we do it all. Today, I'm going to tell you about the day my daddy and I learned how to pray. On this day, daddy took me to brunch at our favorite spot, chicken and waffle. We love brunch because they have breakfast and lunch foods. I get a big waffle and chicken strips. It is so delicious. Daddy always says, if you want to make a friend of anybody, feed them and you will be thick as thieves. I wasn't sure how thick thieves were, but I love when daddy feeds me. Daddy cut my food before we ate. Then he put his head down and closed his eyes. He poked his eyes open to find me staring at my food. The waffles smell so delicious. I can already taste them. Daddy cleared his throat. <clears throat> I immediately lowered my head and play prayed as I would often do. Daddy began to pray. Father God, we come before you to thank you for the bounty we are about to receive. We thank you for our family. We thank you for our health. We pray for nourishment. We pray for grace. Daddy always finishes the same way. I thank you for my beautiful daughter, Zola Shakur Collins, May she continue to grow in you. Amen, amen, and amen. I looked at daddy. I was still hungry, starving even, but I needed to know. Daddy, why do we do that before we eat? Who are we even talking to? Daddy laughed. My daddy is different from other adults. He lets me ask questions and never gets mad. He always says, asking good questions is how you learn, Zola. Never be afraid to ask your questions. Daddy was about to get into professor mode, as I call it. Let's finish eating, and we will go on another adventure when we get home. I was so excited. I love when we learn together. But as Daddy always says, when you answer one question, you create 100 more. When we got home, we went straight to Daddy's lab. He has everything a mad black scientist might need. There were drones flying around, robots repairing Daddy's bicycles, and even aquaponics. I have to go fix our time travel spectrometer. I can't have us getting lost in Jurassic Park, Daddy said. I was confused. Daddy walked over to a big machine that looked like a giant metal tortoise. He played with the um, screen and screwed on a couple of finger bobs. Then it came on. The tortoise almost touched the ceiling, it was so big. Daddy and I got into the tortoise. I was shocked because inside, it was like a real tank. Daddy looked at me with a serious expression. He gets that Zola don't play with me face sometimes. The questions you asked were super important, Zola, and you will be answering them for the rest of your life. The rest of my life, I thought to myself, but the only way I can show you why people pray is to tell you why I pray. 
Daddy pressed some buttons on the computer and a, our big tortoise. The legs and arms collapsed inside. Vroom. Daddy looked at me again. Zola, we are about to take Yertle, king of the turtles, back in time. We will go very far before even Granny was born. We are observing today. Sometimes the past can hurt, baby, but that is okay. We do not need to change the past because whatever happened was supposed to happen. This is hard for adults to understand. And this too, you will have to learn in life over and over again. Life is tricky that way. I looked up at daddy and stared deep into his eyes. Daddy, let's go. He laughed like he always does. And we were off. Yertle crashed into a big building. People were singing and there was an overwhelming amount of joy and happiness in the room. From inside the tank, it was hard to hear what they were saying. Let's get out, Daddy. Where are we? I asked impatiently. It is 1992 and we are on the west side of Chicago. This is weeks before Michael Jordan and the Bulls win their second championship. Daddy loves the Chicago Bulls. This is the church your daddy grew up in, Greater Open Door Missionary Baptist Church, or G-O-D. Up there singing is my granddaddy and my grandmother. We call them Grandpa and Nana. She taught me how to pray. Daddy turned Yertle with the knobs and continued as he pointed. You see your granny right there, looking young? That is me over there with the high top fade. Daddy laughed so hard he bent over, slapped his knee, and bumped the knobs, making Yertle stumble around the church. Can we get out, Daddy? I asked again. Of course, Minnie Me. I love when he calls me that. I ran to sit next to my daddy, the little one. He was brimming with joy. His head was pretty big. So were his teeth. I see where I get it from. Daddy, the big one, came and sat next to me too. The people singing so, um, sounded really passionate. This is my favorite church song, said Daddy. The choir bellowed, drip, drop, drop, drip, drop. Holy Ghost, rain down on me. I could feel it deep down inside of my bones. So I recently found out that that was a Chicago uh, church song. I didn't know that beforehand. Um, Granny stood up and began to yell. My daddy's Nana got really into it too. Nana taught me how to pray, Zola. You know the prayer we say before bed? That's the Lord's prayer and Nana taught it to me. He paused for a second. Daddy really loved her, just like he loves me. She taught me in daycare. We all start off praying to our parents, God, but at some point in life, you create your own relationship with God. After the choir sat down, the preacher talked about this man named Jesus. He also called him Jesus Christ. There was even something about a lamb. The man was quite loud. I wanted Nana to start singing. Zola, that is Reverend Nelson. He really knows God. Reverend Nelson told story after story about Jesus. Then he started talking about Jesus dying and I didn't like the, the story at all. He bled for our salvation. He died on the cross. Daddy, I don't like this. Can we go? Why did Jesus have to die, Daddy? He sounded like such a good person. Daddy laughed and put his arm around me. I love when he does that. Zola, Jesus was the best person ever to walk the earth. He even healed people on the Sabbath. Daddy laughed again. He fed the hungry. He was awesome. Daddy smiled. But sometimes the past hurts and everything happens in due time. Jesus got up after he died, just like you and I will. But remember, once we answer one question, we create a hundred more. Daddy rubbed my head, messing up my hair. When church was over, Daddy and I got back into Yertle. 
I was a little sad about Jesus, but daddy told me not to worry. We are about to meet him and watch. He will fill us with a living word. Huh? What is daddy talking about? Words are not alive or are they? But I guess he's right because now I have more questions. After daddy entered some numbers on the screen, Yertle's legs and arms collapsed once more into his body. Boom. This trip seemed much longer than the last. Where are we going, Daddy? I asked impatiently. We are almost there, baby. No need to worry. We landed and once again, Yertle crashed. We got, we got to adjust that landing. Daddy looked up in the air, clearly counting something. Zola, hopefully we landed at the right time. I pray we did. I am so excited to see this. I could tell daddy was excited because he was out of Yertle before me this time. Um, daddy, I said, giving him the look. He politely got back in the machine and lifted me out as all daddy should. Zola, this is my favorite story about Jesus and it takes place in Bethphage. I looked at the man in the center of a mass of people. He had a um, he had brown skin like mine and a salt and pepper afro like Frederick Douglass, the great civil rights leader. I was surprised Jesus looked like us. Actually, they all look like us. Who are these people, Daddy? Zola, these are the Israelites, also known as the Jewish people. Jesus is Jewish and practices their faith. He is the son of God and was put on earth to serve a very special purpose. Jesus spoke to a group of men and women saying, tell the people of Israel, look, your king is coming to you. He is humble, riding on a donkey, riding on a donkey's colt. Go into the village over there. As soon as you enter it, you will see a donkey tied there with its colt. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone asks what you are doing, just say, the Lord needs them and he will immediately let you take them. Wow, daddy was impressed. What is a prophecy, daddy? What's a cult? Why would a king ride a donkey and not a horse? Daddy broke his concentration and smiled warmly. These are questions we all ask. But God works in mysterious ways, baby. The best answer I have is that our creators want us to choose them. And they leave hints like landmarks on a map to them throughout our life. Jesus is one of those big hints on the map. He is called a messenger. But listen to the living word. Jesus is much better than me at explaining it. Daddy said, guiding my attention back to Jesus. Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a donkey. We rode behind the mass in Yertle. People were praising Jesus and shouting um, as he entered the city on the colt. Praise God in high heaven. Praise God for the son of David. These people were overjoyed to see Jesus, but not as much as my daddy. Jesus entered a church just like grandpas and nanas. People were selling all types of things, lion furs, pots with snakes, and even smelly fish. It was like a flea market. Jesus was not happy. He yelled and pushed people out of the church, calling them sinners and money changers as they ran. When Jesus was done, he got on his knees and prayed just like daddy does. In his hands was a book of some sort. His followers waited outside along with the men from the church. They angrily stood in long white robes like Catholic priests before pushing their way to the front. The men in the long robes asked the question in unison, is it right for us to pay taxes to Caesar? I know what taxes are. My daddy complains about taxes on everything. He is always talking about property taxes, income taxes, and the infamous sales taxes. Daddy says that's money the government makes for doing nothing. Confused, Jesus looked at the men. I think he knew it was a setup. He told the men to look at a coin. 
They looked at the coin, confused now. Jesus then laughed, smacked his knee like daddy does and said, pay unto Caesar what is Caesar's and pay unto God what is God's. My daddy was starstruck. His mouth was wide open and I could tell he needed a second to himself. But I had some, so many questions. Daddy said, we have one more stop before dinner. We must stop by Senegal circa 2007. Daddy got excited all over again. On the way, I got to ask Daddy all the questions I wanted to ask. Daddy, why did Jesus get so mad? What was that book he had? What were the people doing in the church? Who is Caesar and what do I owe him? I had so many questions and my daddy answered them all with patience. Jesus is God's son, just like you are my daughter. How would you feel if someone opened a store and started selling seafood in our living room? I understood it that way. It would stink up the whole house. The book he held is called the Torah. It is the book that God gave to the Jewish people and Caesar was like the king at the time. So the people had to pay taxes to him, just like our money has presidents on it. And daddy pays crazy taxes to the government. Caesar was on ancient money. That too made sense. So they just pay Caesar money and taxes, just like the ones you always complain about. I was thrilled to piece it all together. Daddy frowned and nodded. Then he continued. And what Jesus meant was that you pay Caesar money and you pay God with your eternal soul. Eternal soul? Now I had even more questions. We landed on a beach. Once again, Yertle was crash landing. Daddy, when are you going to figure out that landing? I love teasing my daddy. When we got out of Yerto, we were on, on sand among a herd of cows. They were so big, they looked like statues. Their horns were long and pointy, and they were different color combinations of black, white, brown. If I wasn't with my daddy, I would have been very scared. Daddy took my hand. The people here have trained their cattle to Roman graves. It is so cool. The cattle leave their house to graze and come back daily. We began to walk down the beach. Just beyond the cows, we saw a group of men playing soccer. You see the one with the short locks and the yellow Brazil jersey? I nodded. That's me. I was around 19 years old at the time. I studied abroad in Senegal. This is why we travel so much to this day. Daddy wants you to experience the world. My daddy ran really fast past us. He had the ball. He began to make a move. Then a bell rang. All the men came to a halt. They chatted about the game and started walking inland. <coughs> we walked to a place where there were a lot of men praying in unison. There was a singer, but his words weren't in English. The singer called and the men responded in the same language. Then the men bent down on, the, on their knees. They were praying like daddy does. I was about to step into the building, but my daddy grabbed me by the shoulder. You have to clean yourself before you pray with these Muslim brothers. It's called the ablution. You have to wash your face, hands, and feet before we can pray. It helps remind us of the holiness of God. Daddy walked me through washing my hands, mouth, nose, face, arms, eyes, and feet with a watering can. It was a, a lot just to pray, but I watched my daddy do it and it looked peaceful. Plus, I wanted to be just like him.
When we walked in, the man singing had a different book than Reverend Nelson. What is that book, Daddy? It's the Holy Quran. These men use the Quran as their holy text, just like Nana and Reverend Nelson used the Bible, and Jesus used the Torah. I looked around and found 19-year-old Daddy wearing weird clothes. He had on a colorful flowing linen outfit. I snickered. Then Daddy said, I know I look funny. I am wearing a traditional bifall outfit. I will tell you who the bifall are when we get home, but we need to pray. It is okay if you do not know the words. Be there in spirit and follow me. In the name of God, the most gracious and most merciful, my father began to pray. He held his hands up with palms raised to the sky. He moved in unison with the other uh, Muslim brothers in the church. We moved between standing and kneeling several times. Then the men sat on the floor. Most of them played with a beaded necklace as they mumbled under their breath. Afterwards, we got back in Yertle and went home. This time, Daddy did something different. We didn't crash, and he gave me a look upon our smooth landing. At home, we went to Daddy's room. He set me on the edge of his bed and showed me the two books on his dresser. Zola, Daddy prays to God. I read both the Quran and the Bible because they help me talk to the Creator. I was born a Christian and Nana taught me the Lord's Prayer. I wish I got to meet Nana, I said. My daddy agreed. Excuse me. You just did, Dr. Zola. She is a great woman, isn't she? I learned to pray as a lifestyle for my Bifall brothers. We would stop everything and anything to talk to God. I learned how to pray from different cultures. There are a lot of different ways to be in God's presence. Some people meditate, some chant, and others explore nature. In life, Zola, you will have to learn how to listen and talk to God, and I am here to help you. Daddy kissed me on the forehead. It was time for us to make dinner. Daddy and I cooked dinner, as always. Daddy made my plate like all daddies should. We sat down to eat. But this time was different. Can I pray this time, Daddy? Of course, Dr. Zola. You can pray anytime. God, I thank you for my daddy-daughter days. Me and Daddy learned so much together. I thank you for sending Jesus, and I know you love me and Daddy. So before we eat, I ask that Daddy take me to the future on our next daddy-daughter day. I looked up at Daddy smiling. He was smiling back. Amen, amen, and amen, we said in unison. Until next time, friend, I can't wait to tell you about our next daddy-daughter day. Maybe it will be in the future. The end. All right. So as I said, um, this is the third installment of our No Mountain High Enough series, Zola and Daddy Walk with God. Uh, we also have Zola's daddy-daughter dates. And... Dr. Zola and Daddy Explore Ear Infections. Um, and all books can be purchased at my website, collinscubicle.com. Thank you very much, and I have enjoyed reading to you.